Welcome to another edition of Motoring 88. Real fun is on the road. This is Jim Kenzie for Motoring 9. I'm Phil Gardner for Motoring 88. This is the Two Minute Test Drive. This week we're on location at Stark Auto Sales in Toronto and you're looking at a 2013 Kenworth which is the pride and joy of Bobby Gosby. He's worked here for 25 years and he's really pumped this week as he knows that he's carrying a very special guest. Under that cover is Motoring TV's Car of the Year for 2018. And my goodness where has the time gone? That's us back in 1993. And I know I speak for my good buddy Graham here when I say after 30 years, we're just happy to be standing on this side of the grass, or in this case, this side of the cement. And speaking of feeling good, I think that's a good way to describe the Canadian automobile industry after 2017. Absolutely. Five consecutive years of growth and 2017 saw a very significant first. Over 2 million vehicles found new owners. Now of that lot, almost 70% were light trucks, and that would include our first category, crossovers under $40,000. <laughs> The Crosstrek is the second vehicle to use Subaru's new global platform. It's 70% stiffer, which gives a solid base to a crossover that's more than willing to venture off-road. Throw in an extensively reworked engine and transmission, along with one of the best all-wheel drive systems available, a rich cabin and a ton of amenities, and you now have a real contender. While the Nissan Qashqai is new to Canada, it's actually the second generation model of a vehicle that's been sold in other markets around the world. It arrives with a 140 horsepower, two liter four cylinder, a six speed manual transmission, or a CVT. Now, if you want all wheel drive, you'll have to take the latter. Interestingly, the Qashqai is sold in the US as the road sport. It would make sense to continue that name here in Canada. The Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross is a new compact crossover that arrives with a top-notch interior, lots of luxury and the right safety equipment. As is Mitsu's want, the 1.5-litre engine arrives with a CVT which tends to blunt the initial launch. Once moving, however, the Eclipse Cross is peppy and fun to drive. The handling, however, well, it's very much skewed to the comfort side of things. The best new crossover under $40,000 is the Subaru Crosstrek. While crossovers are taking a big chunk out of the sedan market, Family Cars had three of the most significant launches this year. Here are the nominees for Family Car. The Honda Accord has grown from something smaller than the current Civic hatch to a mid-size sedan with room for a family of five. It has also ditched its V6 power in favor of two petty turbocharged four-cylinders. Throw in nimble handling, rewarding comfort and the right safety gear, and it remains a top contender. When Kia landed in Canada, it did so with a meager lineup. That has changed big time, and the new Stinger is a prime example of just how much things have improved. The five-door has stunning looks, a choice of two turbocharged engines, and the driving dynamics demanded of a European super sedan. In short, it sets a very high standard for the segment. Now in its eighth generation, the Toyota Camry has long been a staple of the mid-size market. This time around, it's got better power and fuel economy, significantly better driving dynamics, and a classy interior that benefits from a 45 mm stretch in the wheelbase. In a nutshell, it's got space and pace for all. The best new family car for 2018 is the Kia Stinger. Take a hatchback and shoehorn in a 2-litre turbocharged 4 that's force-fed its air at 22.8 psi and you have the Civic Type R. Firing the 306 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque through a 6-speed manual slams the power to the road with authority. Throw in a driver-selectable suspension and razor-sharp steering and you have one demon of a hot hatch. When Fiat resurrected the 124 Spider nameplate, the company partnered with Mazda. While the platform is essentially the same as the MX-5, the 124 has its own engine and transmission and a different suspension calibration. The result is the 124 Spider is an engaging ride with a character it can call all its own. 
The 2018 Ford Mustang is a story of more. More power, bolder looks and some options that take the good to another level altogether. It effectively shifts the Mustang from a straight-line muscle car with some cornering ability to a sophisticated track-ready missile, especially when the 5-litre V8 and its 460 horsepower is neatly tucked under the hood. The best new sports car for 2018 is the Honda Civic Type R. We've just got started and it won't be long before we unveil our best vehicle for the year 2018. So stay with us. Motoring TV is brought to you in part by Stark Auto Sales, a better way to buy a car. Motoring TV is brought to you in part by WeatherTech Canada. For the ultimate protection for your car, truck or SUV, go to weathertech.ca because nothing protects like WeatherTech. You're looking at Motoring TV's best vehicle for 2018, and it's surrounded by vehicles hoping for a second and maybe third life here at Stark Auto Sales in Toronto. Let's join Graham for our next category. If you're shopping on a budget, you're more than likely looking at a small car. Our three nominees give you great bang for the buck. The Hyundai Ioniq Hybrid is a strong alternative to the usual fuel miser suspects. It has a perky style, nimble handling, and it's frugal. While the 139 horsepower and 10 second run to 100k is not going to set your heart afire, the hybrid's average fuel economy of 4.3 litres per 100 kilometres will give your wallet a welcome break. The Kia Rio enters its fourth generation with a sharp new look, stronger platform and expanded dimensions, including a 10mm stretch in the wheelbase, which means more space for all. The 1.6-litre engine gets the Rio to 100k in 10 seconds, and it boasts an average fuel economy of 6.9 litres per 100 kilometres. The Rio is also one of the few at this end of the market with autonomous emergency braking. The new Honda Fit receives a host of improvements including a mild styling refresh, tweaked suspension and an upgraded infotainment system. The bigger news is the addition of the Fit Sport Honda Sensing model. It brings the latest driver assistance technologies to the affordable level. Fit also brings a 130 horsepower engine, a run to 100k of 9.6 seconds and an average fuel economy of 6.6 .6 litres per 100 kilometres. Motoring's best new affordable car is the Hyundai Ioniq. The Alfa Romeo Stelvio is a slick looker and a motivated mover. While it lacks the off-road ability of some in the segment, few can match its work ethic and on-road manners. It's a delight to drive when the road takes a turn for the better. Now the 2.0-litre turbocharged Stelvio pushes 280 horsepower and runs to 100k in 6.1 seconds. If you need more, Pick the 505 horsepower V6 model. The redesigned Audi SQ5 arrives with a new platform, updated styling and a more powerful V6 engine along with more technology and safety features. The Hot SQ earns a 3.0-litre turbocharged V6 that pushes 354 horsepower through all four wheels. It'll get you to 100k in 5.3 seconds, which is very quick. The handling is stellar and certainly more wagon-like than a crossover. It is a very compelling package. The F-Pace represents a first for Jaguar, a crossover that blends the luxury of the company's sedans with a healthy dose of utility. It arrives with two gas engines and, for those into economy, a diesel. Naturally, it drives all four wheels, but think of the F-Pace as an on-road ride with a modicum of off-road ability. Leave the tough boonie bashing to its Land Rover counterparts. The best new sports crossover for 2018 is the Jaguar F-Pace. As Graham mentioned earlier, we hit a sales milestone in Canada last year with over 2 million units sold. And as most people know, the majority of those are trucks. And as viewers also know, I run the Canadian Truck King Challenge. And we recently just finished our 2018 testing. We had 10 new pickup trucks across three categories. And in our midsize category, the Chevrolet Colorado ZR2 came out on top. For the half-ton category, it was the Ford F-150. 
And in the HD category, it was the Chevrolet Silverado 2500 Heavy Duty, which also was the overall points winner for 2018 and also is the Motoring TV Truck of the Year. Stay with us. We're getting close to unveiling our best vehicle for 2018 as our Car of the Year special continues from Stark Auto Sales in Toronto. We're shooting here at Steve Stark's and it's amazing to see all these beautiful, extremely valuable cars. But it's really depressing to see how many of them have front end damage. People are just driving into other people. Now, the technology is getting better. We've got collision avoidance systems that will warn you. Sometimes there's flashing lights in the dashboard. Sometimes there's honking and beeping and so on. Some cars will actually steer out of the way. But still, people are running into each other. And why? Mostly because of cell phones. People simply cannot avoid answering the phone, no matter how important it is. They're... Excuse me, I got a call. I have to take this. Talk to you later. What's that? Motoring TV is brought to you in part by Tirecraft Auto Centers. Find your guide at tirecraft.com. Motoring TV is brought to you in part by Silver Wax Premium Canadian Car Care Products. We're back at Stark Auto Sales in Toronto as we continue with Motoring TV's Car of the Year special on TSN. As we all know, the talk of the industry these days is all about autonomous cars, but Gray, maybe it's just me, but I think it's gonna be a long time before we have an autonomous car category in this show. You got that right. Me and my driving gloves will both be six feet under. One of the segments that is beginning to enjoy some much needed growth is that of the green car. Now three nominees, two plug-in hybrids, and an all electric. The Chevrolet Bolt officially puts an end to range anxiety thanks to its monster 60 kilowatt hour battery. This gives the Bolt a driving range of 383 kilometers from a single charge and further when it's driven with an eye to battery conservation. That however only tells part of the story. The 266 pound feet of torque brings a run to 100k of 7 seconds. Now that's good for a family car and exceptional for an electric ride. The Clarity Plug-in Hybrid is Honda's latest entrant into the electrified race. Where the Clarity differs from most hybrids is the fact it's really an electric vehicle with a gasoline range extender and power enhancer. With a combined gas electric output of 212 horsepower, it's a sprightly drive that has room and exceptional fuel economy. The Hyundai Ionic Electric arrives with a 28 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, an electric motor with 218 pound feet of torque and a driving range of 200 kilometers. Now if that driving range is not quite what you need, there's always the Ionic Electric Plus plug-in hybrid. It has 47 kilometers of electric only driving and a claimed combined driving range of 1000 kilometers from a single tank of gas. No question about the best new green car for 2018. It's the Chevrolet Volt and the fact it does away with range anxiety. Talk BMW M5 and it's the numbers that wow. The 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 pumps out a dizzying 600 horsepower and a tyre shredding 553 pound feet of torque. To keep things civilised it now drives all four wheels although there is a traditional rear drive setting if desired. In the end it continues to be one of the world's very best super sedans. A 0 to 100k run in 3.4 seconds kinda says it all. Think Lexus and conservative is the first word that comes to mind. The LC500 smashes that notion totally. With its sweet looks, poised handling and a potent powertrain, it is not to be ignored. The 500 has 471 horsepower and 398 pound-feet of torque, along with a run to 100k of 4.7 seconds. It's an engaging drive that will forever change how Lexus is viewed. Of course, if you want to go green, there's always the hybrid model. Porsche has added five new GTS variants to the 911's lengthy list of models. The GTS arrives with a 3-litre twin-turbocharged flat 6 that pushes 450 horsepower and 405 pound-feet of torque. This gives the Carrera 4 GTS Coupe a rocket-like run to 100k of just 3.6 seconds. Of course, it handles like the Dickens, meaning man and machine combine to become one adrenaline-pumping entity. Motoring's best new performance car was a tough choice, but in the end, 
the Lexus LC500 won the day. Three to seven hundred dollars isn't uh, out of the ordinary for one of these sensors. They can be pretty pricey. Till next week, I'm Bill Gardner for Motoring 2000. What? What's the matter? That was probably what? one of the best you've done in uh, Get best out. first takes. First takes. That's why they call me One Take Bill. Wow. Our next category features three very fast executive sedans. Here are the nominees for Best Prestige. It's bold and oh so brash, but it's as sexy as any inanimate object gets. That sums up the Alfa Romeo Giulia that wears a four-leaf clover on its fender. It brings tenacious handling and a Ferrari-based V6 that pushes 505 horsepower and 443 pound-feet of torque. Fast, you ask? Of course. The 3.9-second run to 100K puts it in with an elite crowd. The BMW M550i X-Drive adds some spice to an already solid drive. Chief among its attributes is a 4.4-litre twin-turbo V8 that pushes 455 horsepower through an eight-speed box and all four wheels. The combination brings a run to 100K of four seconds, meaning the M550i X-Drive is little more than an M5 in civvies. The Mercedes AMG E43 gets its inspiration from the adrenaline fueled E63. Powered by a 396 horsepower twin turbo V6 that powers all four wheels through a nine speed automatic, the E43 is an executive sedan with the ability to wow the driver. It is as opulent and ready for the digital age as it is fast. The run to 100K comes in at 4.6 seconds. Motoring's best new prestige car is the BMW M550i X-Drive. Now here in Steve Sarks, he points out that a lot of these cars were rental cars. A rental car by law can't be more than two years old. So with all the technology that's being introduced in new cars, chances are you're jumping into a car you've never driven before. You're probably in an environment that you've never been in before, roads you've never seen before. And you also don't know how to even turn the wipers on. So if you are renting a car, please take a couple of minutes to get to know the vehicle before you go launching out into some unfamiliar traffic pattern. Because the other car you hit might be me. Well, it won't be long before we pull the wraps off Motoring TV's Car of the Year for 2018. Stay with us. Motoring TV and the Car Guide have joined forces to bring you what we believe is the best one-stop automotive site in Canada. Stories by leading Canadian writers, more videos, and 30 years of Motoring TV archives. You can also check out our TSN broadcast schedule and join us on Facebook and Twitter for the total Motoring TV experience. Now, I personally consider it the most practical vehicle on the road today, but let's be honest, minivans get no respect. None whatsoever. It just makes no sense to me. What does make sense, however, our next category, mid-level crossovers. The Range Rover Velar points the way to the company's future. It is refined, and while it looks like the cabin may be hogtied by the Darth Vader-like looks, that's not the case. It's sumptuous, roomy, and rewardingly fast, running to 100k in 5.8 seconds. The bonus is when a rural track beckons, few vehicles tackle a gnarly trail as well as the Vela. It was designed in North America and aimed at satisfying the crossover craze. That pretty much sums up the Volkswagen Atlas. In simple terms, it takes the Tiguan basics and pumps everything up big time. The popular model will arrive with a brawny V6 engine, four motion all wheel drive, and a decidedly upscale cabin with room for seven passengers. Lest I forget, well, it also comes with 17 cup holders. The Volvo XC60 can be likened to a scaled down XC90. As such, it brings an upscale interior with the next generation iPad-like infotainment system. It's also marked by the choice of three two-liter engines. The base uses a turbo, the mid-range a turbocharger and a supercharger, and at the top end is the 400 horsepower T8 and its gas electric powertrain. All-wheel drive is standard in all cases, as is Volvo's reputation for safety. Another very difficult category, but the Range Rover Velar is motoring's best new crossover 
over $40,000. Well, we've reached that point in the program. We're going to announce our overall best vehicle for 2018. Who's eligible? Well, all our category winners are. So let's review. Well, tradition dictates that Jim, who doesn't always agree with Graham and myself, well, Jim gets to announce his car of the year first. Jim? Now, we've been doing this car of the year thing for a long time. And Graham and Brad get it right maybe three or four times in all that time. So I'm going to make it a little easier for them this time. I'm going to give them two choices, and that'll double their chances of actually getting it right. The obvious choice which was also the North American car of the year, is the new Honda Accord. Now, it's not a huge breakthrough, but it's taking a really, really good car and making it better in a whole bunch of different areas. It's a pretty nice package. The outlier, well, not even that much of an outlier, because it actually finished second in the North American car of the year. It's the Kia Stinger. To me, that car is, is a breakthrough for Kia, because whoever thinks of a sporty car from a Korean manufacturer? So, Graham, I'm giving you two chances to get this one right. You know, Kenzie and I seldom agree on anything, but this year he gave two choices, and of course he managed to get one of them right. Motoring's car of the year for 2018 is the Kia Stinger. While the Honda Accord and Toyota Camry, the other two top contenders, have been perennial winners over the years, both represent an evolution designed to maintain the sales momentum. The Stinger, on the other hand, is a revolution that will give consumers pause for thought. It's fast, it handles like the Dickens, and of course, it's got all-wheel drive, so it's more than a fair-weather friend. We want to congratulate all our winners and also thank Stephen Stark and his team for helping us bring you another Car of the Year special as we head into our 31st season. And you know we've been around that long, first because of our sponsors, one being Stark, but most importantly, you, our loyal viewers. Thanks for watching as we continue to bring you more stories about cars and the people who drive them.